This is the Apple Watch Ultra. It's Apple's first ever watch that also works as a dive computer. I love diving, and this is the dive computer that I usually go with. It's, as you can see, a little bit more clunky than the Apple Watch. So when Apple decided to invite me to Hawaii to test it out for diving, but also for other scenarios like trail running and hiking, especially with the people that actually designed the product, I couldn't say no. So welcome to my thoughts on the Apple Watch Ultra. This video was sponsored by NordVPN. Full disclosure, Apple let me borrow all the Apple gear and took about 25 of us, including me and my studio mate Killian, around Hawaii to test a bunch of scenarios. As you will soon see, that does not mean that I only have praise for this watch. Also, as for my background, I dive fairly regularly, so that is what I'm most qualified to talk about, while I know a lot less about intense running or hiking. Still, here is what I saw overall. And let's start with the good stuff. As a casual hiker, I found hiking with the Apple Watch absolutely fantastic. The display is ridiculously bright at 2000 nits, so you can see it even in the brightest sun with sunglasses on, no problem. The titanium lip around the sapphire crystal display means that the watch will survive a few hits against rocks and stuff, and the battery is almost twice as big as it is on a regular Watch 8, so even with precision GPS and the brighter screen, you should still get through a long day on the trail. The GPS and the compass seemed really accurate, and the updated Compass app now lets any Apple Watch user add waypoints for important spots along the hike, like your starting point or where you parked your car, while also giving you a quickly readable line of your history so you can backtrack to return where you came from, and both worked pretty great in my testing. Now, Apple is particularly proud of their new dual-band GPS tech and how it can accurately track you even in New York between all the tall buildings, so I tried that too. And yeah, it did sometimes take up to half a minute to lock onto a signal when between very tall buildings, but then it worked great from there. The huge screen allows for lots of shortcuts and complications on your watch face, and of course the usual Apple activity tracking stuff works great overall here too. I checked at home in a gym with a fixed heart rate sensor, and the Apple Watch Ultra's own readings were pretty much spot on every time, no matter how the watch sat on my wrist. The so-called Alpine band is specifically made for hiking and climbing with a very secure locking mechanism, and as a hiking companion, this is overall a fantastic watch that makes me want to go outside more often. Now, I could say the same about running as well, but uh, that would be a lie. Running on a muddy trail was fun, but not quite my thing. Still, running is apparently by far the most popular sport tracked by Apple Watches all over the world, and it's pretty clear to me that this is where the Ultra does best as well. We set up a workout plan with multiple intervals that included sections for warm-up, running, pause, etc., each with different goals that you can get guided through with super nicely executed vibrations and audio cues either through your earbuds or through the watch's own speakers. You get all the usual fantastic running stats and programs from regular Apple Watches, plus you can now see one more line of stats due to having a bigger display too, and there's a new band as well called the Trail Loop, which is easily the most comfortable of the bunch. It uses is velcro so it is really easy to adjust and it is stretchable and sweatproof too so it's really comfortable during exercise if you do long distance running where the original watch's battery life just isn't enough i think you will really like this and if it sounds like I only have good things to say about the watch, well, we're now getting to the diving, which to me clearly felt like the least polished of the three experiences that we've had. Okay, since I assume most of my viewers aren't actually divers, maybe let's start with a crash course on what a dive computer actually is. A dive computer is a machine with some depth sensors that very accurately tracks how deep you dive and how much time you spend at each depth, and it then runs a very specific algorithm to determine how much longer you can stay there or how quickly you can come up again, for example. Messing up your depth or coming up too fast can quickly become lethal, so having a reliable dive computer is pretty much mandatory these days. The Apple Watch Ultra is rated for recreational diving only and will only show you your depth down to 40 meters. It is theoretically rated to survive pressure until 100, but the watch very clearly does not want you to use it for anything beyond 40, and it has no air integration like some of the more advanced competitors either, so this is 
is a pretty basic dive computer. We did two dives with Apple, one to about 15 meters and the other to a bit past 20, and the watch performed very well in those. It was consistently about half a meter off from my Maris computer in depth, although I wouldn't be able to say which one was accurate, and otherwise the two agreed on pretty much everything, and the bright Apple display is ultra easy to read underwater even in the dark. The UI is much more intuitive than that of most dive computers, while all the warnings are kind of idiot proof as well. Yellow for simple warnings and red if you do something bad, all of which also vibrates with a really noticeable pattern. I really like that. You can use all buttons and even scroll through options with the digital crown at depth, which impressively all works underwater as well, and the dive band is surprisingly solid too, and can even go over dry suits if you pick the longer version. Not only that, the watch also shows you your dive summary right after you come up with plenty of detail right away on the watch itself, and it of course sings the whole dive lock to your phone automatically. The two dives that I had were really nice, but still, I have two main problems with the Ultra 4 diving. First is that despite diving clearly being one of the main activities that Apple is marketing the watch for, they have not developed the software for diving themselves. Apple only makes a very simple depth app, which is cool for checking your depth and maybe going snorkeling, but is not remotely suitable for diving. For that, you will definitely need the third-party app called Oceanic Plus, and then you even have to get a paid subscription. I have never seen any device marketed as a dive computer that didn't just work out of the box, let alone one that costs 800 bucks and more. And while the app itself is pretty nice, it is far from perfect. For the sake of fairness, Oceanic was in a pre-release state when we tested it, but it did have a few bugs, like the app switching randomly between metric and imperial, or resetting my dive logs after saving them on my phone. Not quite confidence inducing from a piece of software that's supposed to keep you alive. Also, needing a subscription is not just inconvenient, it's just straight up a bad idea. People usually dive from pretty remote locations with no internet, so if you realize, let's say, on a boat that you forgot to get a subscription in advance, or if you decided while diving to extend your trip, you might just not be able to dive with your watch. That is not great. Now, who knows why Apple didn't just develop their own app for diving like they did with every other sport. Maybe they wanted to piggyback back on the trust that the Oceanic brand already has with divers, or maybe they wanted to speed up the development process, or maybe they thought that if someone dies while diving with an Apple Watch on, they don't want to take the full blame themselves. Who knows? Either way, there are no good reasons in my opinion, and they should just make their own app that is native and free like they have done with every other sport. And my second problem comes from the fact that this is a general purpose smartwatch, not a specialized piece of diving gear, which has some pretty clear downsides. When we got back to the hotel after just two dives, I was at 53% battery life even without a cellular connection. Now we also filmed on top of diving, so maybe that is exceptionally bad, but I usually do four dives a day, which means I probably wouldn't feel confident in doing my last dive on a single charge anymore, especially if the battery life degraded over the years. Especially dive computers like mine or even the fancy garments, they last dozens if not hundreds of dives on the charge for a very good reason. You're diving from a boat, it's wet, there are few plugs, you don't want to have to charge your watch between dives. Also, touchscreens in water don't really mix, which is why Apple disables theirs underwater until you literally surface and long press the crown and eject all the water from the speaker completely. Now, if the Oceanic app launches, then all is good, you can just use the button but if you somehow manage to fail to launch the app before diving, you might realize halfway down the dive that, oops, you aren't tracking stuff and you'd have to literally resurface to access the touchscreen and open the app. This hasn't happened to me during any of my real dives, but auto launch did fail a few times in a shallow pool for me, so I'm not 100% confident in this system. A dedicated dive computer can always be fully operated with buttons on the water for a good reason. Apple has added a single extra button in the form of the action button, this time on the Ultra, but I think there should be even more. And finally, while I wasn't able to film this, I did manage to crash and reboot the watch a few times when I tried to screen record the Oceanic app. I know it is hardly a normal thing to do to screen record your watch while diving, and we are using pre-release software, but still, this being just a general purpose smartwatch with the usual chaotic updates, where diving is just one of many, many priorities, well, that does make me more nervous about bugs and crashes than on the regular dive computer. 
Now, I think it is important to point out that I'm being critical about hypothetical scenarios. Hypothetically, the auto launch could fail. Hypothetically, the battery could run out. And hypothetically, you might forget to pay for your subscription, etc. It's very likely that careful planning on your side could mitigate many of those issues. And when I used the Ultra, it actually worked great for the most part. Still, I feel like diving is clearly a first generation experience on the Ultra, while other sports like running and hiking feel like 8th gen, I guess. Just much more polished and sophisticated. I do not think that you should buy the Ultra primarily as a diving computer, but for other outdoor sports, I can 100% see the appeal. And if you then manage to get a few dives done with the Ultra as well, I bet you will probably be very satisfied with it in the end. And if you're just generally a tech enthusiast who primarily wants to have an Apple Watch with a bigger, brighter screen and a beautiful form factor that can occasionally take you outdoors too, then I think you'll really like this one as well, even though for that this is a pretty expensive device. Now if you are a tech enthusiast, which I assume you are since you're watching this video, I'll also assume that you already know what a VPN is and why you should get one. Unlocking geo-blocked sites for internet freedom, watching TV shows from abroad, hiding what websites you visit from your network operator, you know all of this. But what you might not know is why NordVPN is probably your best option. So here's why. A. It is simply the fastest VPN provider from all the major ones out there according to independent speed tests, so it's so fast that I genuinely don't even notice it being on. B. It has 5,400 servers in 59 countries, so you can get access to geo-blocked content from just about anywhere in the world. And C. NordVPN also has a bunch of great safety features. They don't keep logs on you, their encryption is super secure, and they have all the nerdy security options if you want more. Split tunneling your traffic, double VPN, a kill switch in case your encryption stops, onion over VPN to use Tor, and a lot more. Of course, you can install NordVPN on any of your phones, computers, or even your router to cover your whole home network with up to six devices covered under their standard plans. And those plans are extremely affordable. At nordvpn.com slash techaltar, you can not only get a massive discount on a two-year plan, but also four extra months of service for free. And if you don't like it, there's also a 30-day money-back guarantee, so there's no risk in giving it a try. So use my code TECHALTAR at checkout, get that VPN, and I'll see you in the next video.